Hey everyone, it's Movie Lover 120 here. I think I'm here with a brand new video. And this one is going to be for, I think, my final DVD collection video. And that is, of course, going to be... I did plenty of other genres. Now I'm going to do all the kids' movies I own. So, yeah. This one, so, guys. If I'm going to show you my children's movies, there's going to be some rules. Number one. Please don't leave me rude... Please don't put rude comments in the post. If you don't like the certain movie I show, it's fine. I, I can respect your opinion. Just please don't. Let's try. Let's not give rude comments in the post. Let's not go. Let's not go attack me for liking some of the movies in this collection. So we're not that kind of channel. Like we're not. A, we're not a mean channel, guys. Let's not be mean to each other. In this. All right. But but opinion respected. If you don't like these movies, it's okay. Some of these I don't really like, but. I do have like, I do have um, I do have some infant cousins, so some of these I own for if they ever come over and Eric like watches something, I just pop on one of these for them. If they want to if they want to watch it, so yeah. Some of these I got specific. Some of these I got as like distractors. If next time for if they ever if they'd ever come over and visit, so yeah. All right, let's get started. Here's one that I do actually like them. Um, it's a double feature, but I only bought it for its first film, Secret of Nim. Favorite, one of my favorite animated movies of all time. My favorite Don Bluth movie of all time. Yeah, only bought only bought this just for that. I haven't seen I haven't seen the direct DVD sequel. No plans it because I've heard shitty things about it. All right, Hunchback of Notre Dame, one of my favorite Disney movies because of how dark it really is. I think my second favorite Disney movie, easily. Behind the Lion King. This triple feature contains some um, animated Paramount movies. Um, Rango, like this one. Charles Webb, the animated movie. Haven't seen this one in ages, but I remember seeing it in school, in elementary class. Bar Barnyard. It's a right movie for what it is. I think it's better than most people claim it is. Alright. Next up are two ones that I kind of don't really like. Um, Yours, Mine, and Ours. I saw this one as a kid, and I liked it at the time. And then I rewatched it during quarantine. And, um, yeah, I don't anymore. But I own it because it's, well, nostalgic childhood. The Shitty Cat in the Hat adaptation, starring Mike Myers. Yeah. Fucking hate this movie. It's one of the worst Stanley movies I've seen in my life. I've even ranted on it back in like I think in November. Yeah, it's one of the worst news ever. This pretty much because of it, it pretty much canned every live action Doctor Seuss adaptation, and now we're getting animated ones. Because of how terrible this movie was. Yeah, I'll just put these up there. All right. Yeah. Big Girl Six, one of the better di animated Disney movies to come out around the 2010s. I mean, yeah, I don't think it's really like one of their best, but I think it's I think it's good for what it is. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think Baymax is kind of a funny character. Yeah, the two American Tale movies, an American Tale and American Tale of Five Old Goes West. Yeah, the first first one's probably one very sad as hell, jury movie. I can't, I don't know how it's even kind of weird how they rate this movie G. This one's really depressing as hell. And I got Pixels. I used to like this movie at the time. I'm embarrassed to admit that. Yeah, I used to like this the first time I saw it in the theaters. And then I rewatched it, and I realized why people hate it so much. So yeah. Yeah. I think this is one of the... This was a really horrible movie. Four film favorites of Kangaroo Jack, The Ant Bully, Racing Stripes, Iron Giant. I've seen these two, and I um, have seen this one, but I'm only talking to get into detail of this one because there's an, another copy of this this one I own, but which I'll talk about later. But I have seen these two, and um, thoughts on them now, not really much, but I haven't seen Kangaroo Jack. I don't think I'll bother watching it because I've heard some really nasty things about it. So, yeah. I only really bought that at the time just for the Iron Giant. Corpse Bride. Right, 
pretty good movie to watch every Halloween. Maybe one of the best Tim Burton movies out there. Stuart Little, Stuart Little 2, and Stuart Little 3. These two I like. This one I freaking despise. But I think I like this one the most. Sure, yeah, it's the shortest, but I think this one's easily the best. They're good movies I grew up with. Cinderella's Story. I watched that one when I was like an elementary kid, and it kind of holds up. It is, I think it's one of the better Hillary Duff movies. Detective Pikachu. Saw this in the theaters, and um, I still have yet to rewatch it. I haven't even un unboxed it. I haven't even unwrapped this one yet, but I, I actually really like this movie. It's pretty awesome, especially having Ryan Reynolds voice the character. Now we get on to the Iron Giants. This is one of my favorite anime movies of all time. And I think this the signature edition is better because you have this because you have a three other minutes and like three um, three ex extended edition extended by three minutes longer. You have a little bit of a cool delayed scene. I kinda wish maybe if that were the version we got, it probably wouldn't have bombed at the box office. It probably would have it probably wouldn't have been a profit. Zootopia, my favorite Disney animated Disney movie of the 2010s. This was probably before they way. This was made before they went downhill. This was when I used to like Disney at the time. Yeah, it was pretty good, very great film. It was better than I expected. Very intelligent messages and I will show that one later. But Sonic the Hedgehog. Adored this movie before like COVID. This was probably the last major box office success until COVID shut the film industry down. But yeah, I think it's my favorite video game movie of all time. All right, you got Wreck It Ralph, and he got the piece of shit sequel, Ralph Breaks the Internet. So, by already what I said, this one I liked. I think it's definitely one of my favorite Disney movies of all time. Fine. I thought this one was a piece of shit. I first saw it in the theaters, didn't really like it. And then I rewatched it, and then I bought this on DVD just to rewatch it a second time, and I liked it less. Probably one of the most cancerous, boring Disney movies I've ever seen in my life. And probably one of the most disgraceful sequels ever. Monsters vs. Aliens. Saw this, saw this one when I was in middle school. I do kind of enjoy it for what it was. I think it's one of the more underrated DreamWorks movies. Transformers the movie. I'm going to come clean for saying this. I kind of like this a little better than the Michael Bay stuff. Because it feels more like Transformers. I mean, yeah, Octopus Prime has a little, very little any screen time, but... But you get my points. Alright. There it is. Alright. Okay. The Incredibles. And Incredibles 2. Man. Probably definitely one of my favorite Pixar movies of all time. Easily. And um, Incredibles 2 is my favorite Pixar sequel. There are some things I really wish could have been done better, like a screen slaver I really wish was written a way better villain. Villain stuff, and I wish Bob Parr had a much better role, but it was still a very good sequel nonetheless. Well, with that. Rise of the Guardians. Yeah. Paranorman, another good stop-motion movie to watch during Halloween season. Yeah, kind of a good little horror comedy. Wally, -E, very great Pixar movie. Kind of reviewed it. Finding Nemo, one of Pixar's most biggest golden crowning gems ever. The film that really launched them into the animation, really like made them a worldwide phenomenon that's it's one of their most talked about movies of all time. I saw this in theaters when I was like really small. I even saw Finding Dory in the theaters, and Finding Dory is okay. Really, nothing really spectacular like this one though. That's. This is kind of embarrassing to own. Garfield the movie. I used to like this as a kid, and and I just watched it to view just to roast how terrible it is. Coraline. I don't get why this is a kid's movie. I don't know why this is not rated PG-13. This one is scary as fuck. 
Over the Hedge, another one of DreamWorks' most underrated movies. Got My Girl, My Girl 2. Haven't seen My Girl 2, but I have seen the first one. It's very sad as hell. This is a one really sad as hell movie. I don't get how this is marketed to kids. I mean, yeah, it stars the kid from Home Alone, but I would not call that a kid's movie, but I'm solely in the collection because it's marketed for children. Balto. Ugly Dolls. Hop, which I reviewed and already talked about. Land Before Time, my second favorite Don Bluth movie. Yeah, I, I wish it were longer, but I think it's also one of my favorite I mean, movies of all time. Also, extremely heartbreaking movies. Hell, I mean, yeah. It went downhill when at least all the damn direct DVD sequels, but this one easily stands out as the best. Ferngully, an okay movie for what it is. And you got these. The only ones I saw as a kid were Mouse Hunts and Polly. I have not seen these three. So I can't say anything about those. Alright. Two Looney Tunes movies, Space Jam and Looney Tunes Back in Action. They're both underrated childhood gems I grew up watching. I mean, okay, technically I only, I only watched this one as a kid. I didn't watch this one until like last year when the drive-in, only the drive-in was really safe to go to. And they were doing like old movies because of like COVID and stuff. But I guess this is, it's far from perfect, but it's still a fine movie. I will be reviewing it this week to prep for a Space Jam New Legacy coming out. This one is kind of more Looney, more of a Looney Tunes movie. Really so. I kind of wish this didn't flop. The only reason it bombed was because of that shitty Cat in the Hat movie that came out and ruined this movie's chances of making money. And of course because of little Elf and Brother Bear already being out. Alright. Cheaper by the Dozen. Cheaper by the Dozen 2. I watched this as a kid. They don't hold up today really. All Inside Out, Pixar's Return to Form. This movie really hit me hard in the feels because this came around the time I was just about to finish high school. So yeah. Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius. This is why that's there. The only reason that's there is because I bought this at Valley Village years ago. And I remember watching a show as a kid. I hadn't seen the movie at the time, but this is kind of more of a pilot to this series. Shrek. I don't own any of the sequels. Well, except for Puss in Boots. So, yeah, but I think I'm one of the many people that prefer Shrek 2 over this one. This one's still good, but I think Shrek 2 does it better. Well, I definitely did not buy Shrek the Third because I thought Shrek the Third was trash. Shrek Rare Actor was also okay. Had, his, had some great... It was a good ending, but still wasn't as good as, like, the first two, but yeah. But yeah, once again, do not own Shrek the Third because I think it's a ball of shit. Alright. Got Disney's massive return to form for animated stuff after two terrible Disney sequels, Frozen 2 and Ralph Breaks the Internet. Raya and the Last Dragon. I reviewed this movie. I think it's probably one of the better Disney movies in a long time to come. I'm glad they finally decided not to go like the woke stuff, and I think... I think Rise of Perfect Female Female Lead Asian Female Lead is probably one I'd rather look up to over someone like Rose Tico or the live action version of Milan. Way better character than both of those. Lilo and Stitch, another one of one of the better animated Disney movies that come out in the early two thousands. Alright. I have like hold on guys. Forgot about these four back. Okay, I back on. Got Wander. Really didn't really see this one until 2019, but it was a really good movie. A perfect, perfect film message about like true, perfect message to like choose kindness and how we should. Now we shouldn't treat others different. Treat others horribly just because they're different. Yeah. Puss in Boots, perfect spinoff of one of Shrek franchise's most most perfectly written characters. One of the best. Characters of the franchise. Probably better than the two, than three and four. Alright, got Ice Age. 
and Ice Age The Meltdown. I think the two only really good Ice Age movies. Third one's okay. Four and five are crap. Less said about those, better. All right. We did the DVDs. Now, onto the Blu-rays, and then onto the VHSs. Let's see if I forgot. I think there's one I forgot about. Let's see if I can find it. Hold on a minute, guys. Did I forget one? Maybe I didn't, but... No. No, I don't think I did. Okay, maybe I was just... Oh, no, never mind. That one I thought I forgot. It's already in the pile. My bad. Okay. Alright, let's just get on with the Blu-rays. The SpongeBob SquarePants movie. First one. This is the best. This is probably the best of the three movies. I kind of wish this just ended SpongeBob here. It was supposed to, but then it made money and Nickelodeon got greedy. And now we're getting too many seasons. That have really gone downhill since... The three Lego movies. The Lego Movie. The Lego Batman Movie. And the Lego Movie 2. <sighs> Loved the first one a lot. One of my favorite animated movies of all time. And it's really shocking surprise because I really thought this movie wouldn't be that good. Lego Batman Movie. Perfect spin-off of one of definitely among among this version of Batman. Definitely the, probably the best Batman movie since Best animated Batman movie, anyways. And you got Lego Movie 2, the second part. I thought this one really, really missed the mark. I mean, it was still a fine sequel, but I don't really enjoy this one as much. And, and well, I don't think it was terrible. I kind of still wish it made more money so that we could at least still get, like, the... I think we were supposed to get a sequel to this movie. And we are supposed to get a Billion Brick Race spinoff, and, um, yeah... Now the franchise has been sold to Universal, and I'm wondering when we're even going to get another LEGO movie anyways, and if we do, it's probably going to be a crap reboot. So yeah, now thanks to the jerks who didn't even go support this movie, now we're never going to get a, probably never going to get another good LEGO movie again. Yeah, nice job. I don't own Ninjago, and I actually never saw Ninjago, so I can't really say anything about it. Alright. Oh, there's my club. I got Sing, one of the better... Don't attack me for this. I think this is one of Illumination's better movies. Small Foots. Spies in Disguise. AK, which would become Blue Sky's last movie because Blue Sky Studios ended up shutting down this year. Because Disney shut them down. We were supposed to get a Nimona movie, and now we're not going to get that. The Muppets. A perfect way to come back for the Muppets. This one was great. Great way, it really felt like a Muppet movie. I never bought Muppets Most Wanted, and I because I really thought it because I thought it was absolute garbage. I think I saw it in the theaters with my stepbrother, and we both walked out. Yeah, so I did not buy that movie. Secret Life of Pets. Despicable Me. Definitely Illumination's best movie, I think. Although, what people think, most people think, I think I personally prefer. One of the people that prefers Despicable Me 2 over this one. And, well, unfortunately I don't own it, but I really need to, though. And you also got the garbage spin-off Minions. I saw this movie, I used to like it at the time. The more we watched, but the more we watched, and like, no, no. I rather just watched Despicable Me 1 2. And I've never bought, and I've never bought Despicable Me 3 because I thought Despicable Me 3 was an absolute waste of time. Got the Peanuts movie. Blue Sky's best movie, by the way. Yeah, Surf's Up. I haven't unwrapped this one yet, but bought it at Shoppers, and I actually did use to own this movie on DVD's Kid, and I got given away, so I rebought it. I got Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Really loved that movie. What a very underrated Charlotte Gem. I'd watch it every time. It was quite a big Charlotte classic at any summer camp I went to. It was quite a classic. It was quite a classic around, like, my middle school years. So... And uh, Cloud Chosen Meatballs 2. Eh, I didn't really care for Cloud 2. Yeah, Epic. I think I only saw this once and I don't remember much about it. Alright. We are on to the VHSs. I know a little more. 
I own a little more VHSs, but however, those are just ones I already own on DVD, so yeah. I don't need to show those ones, but I just bought them because they're nostalgic. So now here's all the four I don't own on DVD. The Brave Little Toaster, the movie that launched Pixar into the spotlight. How Toy Story Got Made, guys. The first directed DVD Disney sequel, Return of Jafar. I don't own Aladdin, guys. I really should, though. But Aladdin King of Thieves is a way better sequel. Um, what else we got? All right. And of course, you see these. Toy Story and Toy Story 2. Toy Story 3 never came out on VHS, guys. So, yeah. But I own that movie on DVD, except it's at the other house, fortunately. But yeah, I own all three of these. I think this one's third best. This one's second best. And I think Toy Story 3 is the best one. Because it was a great end to the Toy Story franchise. And it should have stayed over. I saw Toy Story 4 once in the theaters, and I thought it was a dis unnecessary, disappointing cash grab. It was 6 out of 10, it wasn't really terrible by any means, but yeah, it was very unnecessary, so yeah, I didn't go buy it, because it, it was not needed movie. But anyway, and that's it for all my children's movies. That will be it for this video, guys. Thank you all for watching. If you liked this and want to see more, and don't forget to like, subscribe to Movie Lover 120.